thank you. Um, my name is Christian. Uh, I'm with Max here. I'll do most of the introduction to give a context because for our group. And, um, and I'll, I'll highlight the, the, the second part here. So let me read the title. So challenges in reward design for reinforcement learning based traffic signal control tackling the alignment heads on. So the, the key words here for us, for our group is mostly the reinforcement learning part and, uh, and the focus on alignment. I think this is the fourth or fifth project that we are taking and mostly on traffic and mostly our machine learning on, on traffic. We use Sumo, no, in one of them we didn't use Sumo, but in all of them we, we use Sumo. But it's usually related to alignment. So what is, what is alignment, right? So alignment, if we get a definition from Brian Christian, we guess alignment is that when the, when the models capture our norms, right? And our values understand what we mean or intend and above all do what we want. So if the machine model is not aligned with our goals or human goals, right? Then we call it misaligned. Right? And why does, what, what does it mean misaligned? Misaligned means when the behaviors, intent, incentives, right? Or inner or outer alignment. So if you have something that is a proxy of your goal, which is the, the inner alignment, is, is misaligned. So you can have misalignment both in, in, the, in the proxy or also in the, in the final goal. So it's a, it's a very difficult problem. It's really a lot of people is working on it and philosophers, computer scientists. And our take here, I think, is, is, a, is a typical computer science approach is reductionism. So we are trying to, to frame as these two challenges. That's okay, how to express these goals. Right? So if, okay, what are the goals and how do we express in a way that I have an ability to represent the behavior, intent and incentive, right? And the second one, how do I inform the actions? Because reinforcement learning is, and ends up being finding a policy that will optimize your reward, which possibly, or hopefully we will align with your goal. And then this, how to inform is basically a ability to achieve the represented goals. And this is the, this is our, our approach. And then this is the line that will go all over. We have expressivity and form, informativeness that we, we convert this into, into metrics. And now I pass to Max to continue. Yeah, thank you, Chris. I'm Max and uh, really happy uh, to speak about this problem today. Uh, I would like to first give you the vision of maybe in the distant future, we have some um, very powerful a traffic agent that can optimize our traffic city scale really well. And then the key is if we have this powerful AI system, maybe in the future, um, we have to align it with our values. So let me uh, quickly give you a rundown of reinforcement learning. And this is uh, like reinforcement learning in a nutshell. If you look on the left hand side, um, reinforcement learning is a machine learning framework that is based on trial and error. In reinforcement learning, an agent interacts with an environment, for example, the Sumo simulator, and it takes actions in this environment. And based on the actions that the agent takes, it gets reward or punishment for the actions depending whether they were good or bad and it then optimizes a behavioral policy uh, which can be represented um, by uh, a neural network for example um, and the agent's goal then is to maximize reward um, uh, achieving the most optimal behavior and on the right hand side, I've um, pictured a little toy example just to, for everyone that's new to reinforcement learning, get some intuition. Um, this is a famous example um, called the cliff walking, uh, walking example. And here we have an aerial view of a grid world and the agent has to go from start to goal and uh, it has to avoid the cliff and um, yeah when the agent uh, moves here um, this is usually um, um, the two ways that it that it can go um, yeah and um, so the agent will try to avoid the cliff here um, and will try to go either a safe or the most optimal path depending on how we reward the agent okay 
So um, what's important for traffic signal control agents uh, is ensuring for, for the system success is ensuring that the agent aligns with the behavior that we intend. And the main mechanism for doing this is really careful reward function design. And uh, here we again have this cliff walking example and maybe we would like to uh, have the agent take the more safer path um, so that could be one of our objective, not just get to the goal. And in that sense, the re reward um, tells us two things. One, it tells us um, what to achieve, reach the goal, but it also can capture um, more nuanced behaviors of the agent, how to achieve it uh, by traveling through the safe path. And uh, let's actually look at um, our scenario. Um, the left uh, picture you're all familiar with, it's the Sumo graphical user interface, and it shows our scenario. It's the most simplest, uh, simplest scenario that you can imagine. It's just um, uh, one intersection uh, with two possible phases. And um, on the right hand side, you can see the traffic demand. Um, and for most of these results that I'm showing, I'm going to refer to this heterogeneous traffic, uh, which is just a time varying Bernoulli distribution, um, where the traffic varies over simulation time. And we simulate it for um, one hour in total. And the controller, um, the traffic signal controller, um, is then um, replaced by an agent which can set the signal to either west, east, or north, south. And very important, uh, uh, I'm saying this last, uh, our goal um, for the rest of this talk is to minimize CO2 emission at this intersection. So that's our objective uh, as the users. So um, quickly for the reinforcement learning setup, uh, we used uh, the discrete traffic state encodings. Um, the state is what the agent observes. It's all, sometimes also referred to as the agent state. And uh, in A, you can see uh, the Sumo graphical user interface of some lanes and some cars. And uh, in B and C, you can see the representation that the agent sees. Um, B is a binary position matrix, where one is a presence of a vehicle and zero is an absence. And C is a normalized speed matrix with values between zero and one. Uh, then the agent, uh, as I said before, can set the signal and we have a fixed time interval of five seconds and then the agent can set the signal to either west, east, green, north, south, green. And between the phase changes, we have some transition period. And lastly, we have some rewards, or um, I would rather say penalties. And uh, actually, all of our rewards are penalties. So we only penalize the agent. And um, we have four um, reward metrics in total. Um, we penalize the agent if cars move slow, if there is a lot of cars waiting in the simulation, so they are queuing. If cars have to brake a lot, that's not a sign of uh, particularly uh, efficient traffic, or if there's a lot of CO2 emission. Okay. So now for um, the neural network of the agent, um, we used a very, very small neural network. Uh, it's just a two-layer, multi-layer perceptron uh, with 64 neurons in each layer. And uh, we used uh, one of the very famous reinforcement learning algorithms called DeepQ Network or DQN, uh, which just learns the goodness, the, the value of uh, particular actions. And then the agent can choose the action that it thinks is most optimal in most cases. 
and then yeah we can um, reward the agent and what the agent should do is maximize the reward and then we can ask okay how should the learning process of the agent look like and this is the curve that that we kind of want it's similar to how humans learn we learn very fast in the beginning fast progress when we approach a new task and then as we get closer to a good solution the the learning kind of uh, uh, has diminishing returns and then we would also want to like um, if, if this uh, reward uh, goes up and up and up we want to approach a level that is near the optimal solution that you could achieve which is depicted by this yellow line and uh, keep in mind this is how the learning should look like ideally now one important assumption which uh, is uh, very valid for our tiny uh, neural network is that agents are bounded in making rational decisions um, this is a very interesting theory from psychology um, called uh, bounded rationality which basically says that agents are bounded in their um, abilities to take rational decisions for example um, because of limited um, memory or limited knowledge of the real world um, or um, perceptual impairment okay so now for the motivation why we look into reward design and aligning this agent um, we took the very naive approach and said okay we just penalize the agent for high co2 emission we want to uh, yeah, minimize this penalty and so this should um, optimize co2 emission and um, yeah uh, interestingly we see um, uh, over the training time of the agent we see a, a, a drop um, in co2 emission over the beginning of the learning but then it tailors off and the agent does not learn and remember we assume that the agent is bounded in learning and yeah if we compare to to some using some other metrics for example um, penalizing by slow speeds if cars are drive slow we can see that we can get better performance so we see this this reward is not quite informative to the agent okay so for this investigation uh, we define two features that a reward should have uh, one it should be informative to an agent so uh, the agent should learn well how to optimize this reward and two it should be expressive of what we want the agent to do and and then uh, informativeness tells us how well the agent learns to optimize the reward which is basically um, the reward curve should go up um, and approach an optimal value and uh, expressiveness tells us whether the learned behavior aligns with our objectives so the agent should not only be able to optimize a reward but when optimizing this reward this should also uh, lower our um, emission objective and yeah um, we see these two pictures here we tried our best to define binary features uh, um, and formalize this and basically we say that a reward model R mod is informative if the reward at convergence time R con is close to the optimal value and it's not informative otherwise and for the expressiveness we said uh, a reward is expressive if it um, negatively correlates with our goal goal g or goal metric co2 so here you can see if this green line goes up then the red line should go down uh, and that tells us that we achieve our goals if we optimize this reward um yeah 
So this brings me to some of our findings. So comparing the CO2 uh, em uh, emission performance of uh, agents trained with various rewards. So what we um, show here is the emission levels in red, uh, the reward in green, and the best reward. And um, um, just uh, looking better, uh, back at what we saw on the previous slide, we want both, um, both plots to go in, uh, both uh, lines to go in the opposite direction, negative correlation. So as the green line goes up, the red line should go down. And we want it to appro uh, approach an optimal uh, level. So we already seen this emission reward and we see that the optimal level uh, of this reward is kind of up here. So it's not really informative to the agent. It's not capable of um, uh, optimizing this very well. And we can also see this reflected in the CO2 emission level. These are um, um, in grams per hour, it's rates. And this hovers around 140,000. And if we now compare to the right-hand side, we can see this is more like this uh, this fast and fast learning at the beginning and slow in the end. And we can see that they nicely uh, negatively correlate these two, um, these two plots and that the agent gets close to, to the optimal value. And here we can see that the uh, emission levels are lower around like 75 or 80,000 um, grams per hour. And uh, yeah, so... Uh, this already looked better, as we saw before. And now we also have um, uh, two more rewards, um, a Q reward and a, a break reward. And these also don't get optimal values. And um, there's, it's questionable if the break reward is even uh, doing uh, something uh, here. And interestingly, uh, you could also see that you have two rewards that are not good on their own. So these don't have really good emission levels. But if combined, um, this one is a combination of Q and break metrics. And they uh, achieve this uh, uh, learning behavior that we uh, desire um, and get good emission levels here. And uh, finally, this is not that easy to combine these two rewards. So uh, what we've also found is uh, we, we took these two rewards, we took the queuing lengths and breaking accelerations and uh, formulated a penalty out of this. And we just took a linear combination. And it turns out that uh, depending on the weighting of this combination, the performance of the agent varies. Um, okay. Yeah, and then you have kind of good performance in the middle here, whereas if you uh, choose a lower weighting for either of these metrics, you have suboptimal emission performance. And uh, this brings me to our conclusion and uh, some of the rewards that we've seen here, we can now categorize with these binary features. One is the informativeness, how, how suitable it is as a learning signal to the agent. And the second is how expressive it is of our goals. And uh, yeah, we saw um, a good performance if, if both of these uh, features were true. So both of these were one, and that is the combined reward of a queuing length and breaking acceleration. And also if we try to optimize for speed. Uh, whereas if we just do the naive approach for emission, this captures our objective really well, but wasn't actually good to train uh, a bounded agent. Um, and with that, I'm uh, concluding the talk and I'm very curious to hear your questions. Also, if you want to check out um, our implementation, it's uh, openly available on GitHub. Um, yeah, and maybe one last slide. Some technologies that helped a lot to, to build this reinforcement learning approach. 
of course, uh, Sumo, uh, also very, very helpful, was an um, open AI reinforcement learning wrapper for Sumo. It's called Sumo RL. Uh, I think it has been presented uh, uh, here in the past. And also a reinforcement learning uh, framework. Uh, it's called Stable Baselines. This was really helpful to, to get reinforcement learning very performant very quick. And it's also um, uh, a work of DLR from the robotics team. Uh, thank you.